Okay, it is episode 16 of the chess.com rapid rating climb, and I have about 55 minutes worth of footage of live gameplay and game analysis, which was pretty cool. It was a great game, and I recorded it, and I go to upload it, and I'm like, let me just check the file real quick. The audio didn't record. There was no audio. So, so instead, instead, I'm not going to completely scrap the game, because the game was sick. And I actually do know now what I want to talk about in the analysis because I've already analyzed it, right? This is some big brain preparation for you guys, which was definitely not accidental and just because I have to because the audio didn't record. We're just going to go through the game just in analysis mode. And it's going to be a shorter video than usual. So if you'd like the longer, the longer videos, apologies. If you prefer the shorter videos, I expect this might take like 15, 20 minutes. Then, hey... Good for you guys. Let me know which you prefer though, because I've been doing a lot of like 50 to one hour videos, 50 minute to one hour videos, um, compared to what I was previously doing, which is more like 15 to 20 minutes. So let me know which you prefer. Anyway, this is the game. Great game, by the way. So it starts E4, C6, the Cairo Khan. And this game has a bit of a theme behind it. And I can tell you the theme because I've already played the game which I normally can't do. And the theme is peace activity. And you'll see what I mean. We'll rush through the opening a little bit. Takes, takes, bishop d3, develop the knights, pawn c3, bishop f4, e6, trade the bishops, knight gf3, castle, castle. And here is the first position where I have to make a decision. And the decision is, do I go e5? Because if I leave it too long, e5 is not going to be an option. And then this bishop is going to remain stuck behind this pawn. And white is going to start developing a bit of a kingside attack. And I could be in trouble. So here, I need to decide whether I want to play an open game with an isolated queen pawn. Or whether I want to grovel and beg for mercy and try and expand on the queen side. The second option is fully viable and I, I'm sure I've played it in previous episodes as a speedrun, which by the way you can find in a playlist down below. And it's definitely a way you can go about it, but I tend to prefer playing e5. Yes, I now have an isolated d-pawn after he takes, but I'm going to try and get some active play around the pawn. Now a move I considered here was rook e8. Trying to set up the idea of e5 again. And white can't block the e5 move with a knight or anything because I just win a pawn. right? What he can do though is play rook e1. And this is a far worse version of e5. Right? So the rook's back here is far better for me than the rooks already being on the e-file you might say why because you've both got, you've both got a rook on the e-file it shouldn't make a difference but it does it does because now if i try to play e5 i'm losing this is losing takes and by the way for reference the computer wants me to take with the rook and give up an exchange it literally wants me to give up an exchange. That's how dire the situation is. You might be saying, why? What's the problem? Takes, 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 takes. You're good. You're not wrong. I am good here. Okay, so what's the problem? The problem is that white doesn't have to mindlessly take. White can play rook takes e5. What? Okay, rook takes e5, knight takes e5, queen takes e5, same position. Yeah, but white doesn't have to do that. I'd encourage you to find the move for white here. Well, there's two moves that win. One of, there is, one of them is more winning than the other, though. It's a crazy move. Knight c4. Did I see this in the game? No. Is that the reason I didn't play rook e8? No. The reason I didn't play rook e8, rook e1, and then go e5... One, I didn't want to trade a bunch of pieces, unnecessarily. Two, with the rooks on e8 and d1, it adds unnecessary complication 
to the position. I did not see this line. Yeah, I'm not I'm not going to lie and say I saw all of this. And that's why I didn't play it. No, the reason I didn't do this was because I didn't want to make the game any more complicated than it needs to be. I wanted to play e5 and break out of the position without blundering any tactics that I didn't see, like this. And knight c4 is an absolute dagger because my rook is attacked twice. My queen is also under attack. So you say, okay, what about takes? Bishop takes h7. Knight takes h7, queen takes queen. I lose the queen. White essentially forcefully opens up all three of these squares to take my queen. Because knight c4 gets rid of the first piece in the way of the attack. And I have to take it because otherwise I'm losing a rook. And then white removes the second, well, that forces me to remove the second piece out of the way of the file. And then white forcefully removes the third piece from the file with bishop takes h7 check. And I lose a queen and the game. So, all that to say I go e5 immediately. Again, did not see that line, but didn't want to allow any complications. So e5, takes, 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 knight f3. Now, I played queen h5 here. That's not the best move. Better is something like queen d6 or queen f4. I like queen f4 because it feels a bit more active. And the point is that it's very difficult to kick this queen out. What I did is go queen h5 because my logic is, okay, I can put some pressure on the knight with a move like bishop g4. And if this bishop retreats, maybe I can access the e4 square with the knight and get a lot of activity. Because that's how you're supposed to play around an isolated pawn. If all the pieces get traded, you're going to have a worse endgame most likely because this pawn can't be defended by another pawn. It's very difficult to not lose that pawn eventually once all the pieces are traded, right? So I need to create I need to create dynamic positional counterplay around the pawn. And that's my goal. The problem is, why can play knight d4? This blockades the pawn which is again a typical way of fighting against the isolated pawn, not allowing the pawn to move forward and trade itself off because it is a weakness, right? So white gets control of d4 and offers me a queen trade. If I trade queens, I'd go so far as to say I'm losing because this pawn is so weak and white has no weaknesses. Maybe I can hold on for a draw, but it's going to be a long game. A very long game and a very difficult game. So I don't trade queens. I go queen g5 instead. And here my opponent actually offered me a draw. I suppose the point was knight f3, queen h5, knight d4, queen g5, and the position gets repeated because I can't trade queens. But after I decline the draw, because we both know, like, the draw is an offer to do this. But if my opponent was to go back to f3, my idea was queen f4. I should have put the queen there in the first place because, again, I missed queen h5, knight d4. And this was my idea to avoid the repetition and avoid the draw. Because if white gives me a move by saying by playing something like a3, bishop g4, and I'd argue I'm now better. White has to play bishop e2 to block the pin. I can play a move like rook a d8, maybe a move like rook f e8, maybe moves like knight e4. I'm getting a lot of forward momentum here. So, instead white finds a really good move. He finds f4. f4 is a great move. Because it attacks my queen. And my queen can't get back into the center of the board or, or onto the queen side. So I play queen h4, and white has a big advantage now. Now knight f3 attacks my queen, but queen takes f4, and just because the queen's aligned with the rook does not mean you automatically rule, rule this move out, because where's this knight going to move? If the knight goes to h4, g5, or e5, I take it. Even though there's a discovered attack on my queen, I can just take it. And if the knight goes back to d4... My queen is absolutely fine, and I'm just up a pawn for nothing. Okay, you can claim he gets a semi-open file, but...
but I also get a pawn, so I'm not complaining. So after queen h4, he could try g3, but g3 allows queen h3, and the queen on h3 is better than the queen on h4 because I control the f5 square. And that's an important square because that's where his pieces are aimed at. Instead, what he does after queen h4 is play knight f5, trying to take advantage of the weak f5 square. But this is a mistake. And typically, in these kinds of scenarios, bits, the bishops are better than knights. But here I take. The problem is, if I don't take and I play, I mean, the queen has no moves because h6 and h4 are taken up. And if I go to a square like g4, then he forcibly trades the queens. And this is bad for me because I just lose a pawn. So, I take, it's the only move, bishop takes, rook fe8, and I quite like the fact that I have good control of the e1 square. My knight is also very difficult to dislodge from the f6 square, and defends d5 from f6. So the position isn't bad. If I have another move, say white plays something like a3 and a4, I'm going to double up on the e-file, and I'm better. I'm straight up better. White isn't going to give me that time though. After bishop takes a5, f5, a5, f5, rook fe8, g3, I drop the queen back to h6, because that's the only move that saves the queen and avoids a queen trade. g4. That's losing. Why? It's very difficult to figure out why. Now, black is threatening g5. And you might say, look, his queen is, sorry, his king is really weak. How do you take advantage of that, though? Like, there's, n there's no way to actually take advantage of it right now. Because you can't play a move like queen g6, the bishop controls it. You can't play a move like knight takes g4 because the g4 pawn is well defended. You can't take f4 because it's defended. You can't infiltrate the second rank because white controls the squares. There's one move here that wins for black. And it's knight e4. Why? Now, I did look at variations of knight e4 during the game. And if my you know, live game commentary had actually saved like it was supposed to, I would have been able to prove it. <laughs> You're just going to have to take my word for it. Now, knight e4 is a great move. Because if bishop takes, d takes, either past e pawn. His queen side is quite weak. A move like queen b6 is about to pick up a pawn, potentially. And his king side is really, really compromised. So this is winning. He can't take, okay? So, okay, what about knight e4, g5? Well, then queen b6. You can see all these arrows that I drew when I initially did my post-game analysis, <laughs> where the audio didn't record. Um, if you can follow what I'm saying with these arrows, basically I'm picking up b2. So, g5 doesn't work. Okay, what about after knight e4, queen takes d5? Yeah, this is losing but only for a specific reason. Now, what I had calculated, because I did see this, but I'd rejected it, because after rook a d8, I saw queen b5, and I want to play rook d2, but then queen takes e8 is mate. And I couldn't find a way to play rook d2 without my rook hanging. The point is, you can go a6. I missed this. If you take on b7, rook d2, it's game over. You're getting mated. Because this rook is no longer under attack. And the knight controls the f2 square, so rook f2 isn't a move. This queen is also cut off from retreating to help out in the defense because it is knight. It's really, really cool. And mate is threatened on h2, so a move like bishop takes doesn't work because of mate. But okay. What about rook a d8, queen b5, a6, queen a4? Yeah, then b5. It's actually a mistake because queen b6 check is apparently better, but just to illustrate my point, 
the queen's trap not trapped sorry but forced off of the attack of the rook say so the move the queen goes to c2 rook d2 again i threaten mate and i attack the queen move like queen b3 still rook d2 you're getting mated this is a line again i missed because i saw this position and i was like oh i've run out of steam i can't get rook d2 in because this rook hangs i didn't spot this idea so instead what i did after g4 is i went queen h4 i didn't go queen h3 because whilst g5 i can take on f5 and i'm i've got a great position because i'm up a pawn although queen takes d5 i could play rook ad8 but i can also play queen b6 check picking up the pawn but his king is incredibly compromised right the problem is white doesn't have to play g5 my point was that i get out of the pit of the fork but white can go with rook f3 and i saw this and i was like huh queen h4 and i'm worse there is the move rook e1 here which is awesome because you force the queen away from the defense of f3 play queen takes f3 computer says this is equal but i would choose black here over white any day of the week just because of how weak white's king is anyhow queen h4 g5 knight e4 is still an idea here and again this loses for the same reason here 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 and rook d2 right so the same thing and again i did see this but i again missed this idea of a6 b5 kicking the queen off the diagonal to get the pressure off of the e8 rook missed it but instead i went knight h5 that's not the best move best move is g6 and i saw this but i rejected it because if g takes f6 g takes f5 and queen takes d5 rookie two is just winning i just didn't look far ahead enough and even if the queen doesn't take here and goes to a square like f3 i can just take on f6 slide the king over and use the g file myself for whatever reason i thought this was better for white don't know why so i panicked i went knight h5 my idea was that i threatened the f pawn the problem is queen g4 and white forces a queen trade i have to trade queens my queen has nowhere to go so takes takes oh i also can't defend the queen and my knight is stuck my knight can't get back into the game so i have to play g6 to defend the knight but bishop takes pawn takes and my pawn structure is ruined now my opponent knows this but he doesn't take yet because my knight isn't going anywhere maybe it's going to go to g7 but he doesn't give me time he plays rook ad1 attacking the pawn so rook ad8 again it's an isolated pawn it's incredibly weak again he could take on h5 he chooses not to he goes rook d3 again here i could retreat the knight but rook fd1 and i'm losing the pawn right so here in line with the theme of the game which is activity i decide you know what this knight is gone my pawn structure is about to get absolutely ruined so what am i going to do about it i'm going to make him take me rook e4 i put more pressure on f4 and i go bro take me if you don't take me then i'm gonna take you and if you play a move like rook d to f3 defending then i'm gonna get out and now i'm better because i have a lot of activity now and my pawn structure although i've got an isolated pawn is not so bad my opponent knows this so after rook e4 he takes pawn takes and i'm worse why am i worse we have the same amount of pawns yeah but the quality of the pawns his pawns are so much better he has two point up 
there two pawn islands of three pawns. I have four pawn islands. And I have four pawns which can't be protected by any other pawn. This is bad. So I'm like, look, okay. If I just play normal moves here, he's going to grind out the end game. He's going to win a pawn or two and it's game over. So what can I do? I can be active. My opponent goes rook h3, attacking h5. I can't defend h5, so I'm not going to try. Here, I consider the move d4. And the point is, if c takes d4, then I take, I threaten f4, I'm going to infiltrate the second rank, probably. If I move like rook h to f3 defending, I bring the king up, I'm probably better, because I have so much activity. My rooks dominate the open files, put pressure on his pawns, my king's going to get active, I'm better. The issue was, I thought d4 didn't work, because of rook d3. I can't take because I hang a rook. Apparently this is still good. After king g7, I was a bit scared of rook d1, winning the pawn. What I failed to realise is I can just take f4. The point is that this position is kind of a zugzwang. No one can do anything. If white plays a move like c4, I win, because this pawn is now passed. And I can bring my king in, probably win f4, it's game over. So he can't move the c-pawn. So he also can't move this rook. The king also can't do a whole lot. Now the king can go to g2 to try and go to g3 to defend this pawn to play the rook over. If I do a whole lot of nothing and allow this to happen, not that, allow this to happen, then I'm losing a rook. Right? No, not a rook, a pawn, sorry. And probably the game. Because it's a 3v2 on the king's on the queen side. And my pawn structure is ruined, remember. But I don't have to be so cooperative. I can play king g6, king g3, king f5. And again, rook fd1, rook f4, I'm winning. Because if rook takes d4, rook takes d4... Rook takes d4, rook takes d4, pawn takes d4, king takes g5. My king can come over and stop this. My f pawn is always a problem, so this king can't really defend. Say, like, something like this. And then, I don't know, king e6, king e4. And this isn't actually that easy to convert. But I guess I just put white in a bit of a zugzwang at some point, where he's forced to push this pawn get this kind of position, and then I use f5, the f pawn is a decoy, to force this king to move, win this pawn, and then go win the queenside pawns and promote. So white can't just trade everything. And effect effectively the position becomes a bit of a stalemate here. This rook can't move, this rook can't move, this rook can't move, this rook can't move, this pawn can't move, this pawn can't move, this pawn can't move because it hangs this. This king can move, but then what? h4? Game's dead. Completely dead. No one can move. Had I seen this line, I would have played it. Because I'm going to take a draw in this position. Because <laughs> I'm worse. I didn't see this. I know this is a very deep line, but I rejected d4 because I missed this. Instead, after rook h3, I played rook e2. My idea was rook f2. Again, I can't trade rooks. Rook e1 check. King g2. And rook d1. This was my idea. And my point is that I'm going to play d4. And rook d3 is no longer a move. Now I did consider the move rook f, f3. And if d4, then the rook can maybe slide over. But I didn't think this was good. Because I thought I can just check him. And after rook f2, just repeat. The computer doesn't like this because of rook f1. What about check? Yeah, then you just have to repeat again. The computer doesn't understand that. It thinks it's better for white, but I can just repeat. And white has to find some incredibly accurate moves to keep the game going. Instead, after rook d1, white does play the top computer move, which is taken on h5. Here I'm just down a pawn. So I go, okay. 
what can I do? I can go d4. After you take me, I'm going to take back like this. I'm going to pressure this pawn. I'm going to go pressure the queenside pawns. Your rook is a bit offside. The only move that actually keeps the advantage for white is rook h3 to try and get back into the game. But although you have a king's eye majority, how are you actually going to use it? I just traded off my weakness on the d file, right? After the move d4, my opponent plays c4 and loses the game. Why? Well, I have a passed pawn. And with a rook this side of it and a rook behind it, you can't bring a rook to block. And this rook is out of the game. Now let's imagine for a second that this is the position. Let's just say for the sake of argument, this is the position. d3, rook d2. White survives, right? Because I can't actually push the pawn. But how many moves did I just give white in a row? Like four moves in a row to get the rook over? That's not how chess works, ladies and gentlemen. G3, sorry, D3. What's white doing? How is he going to stop the pawn? He can't. This rook's out of the game. F5, D2. And here my opponent resigns. He resigns and I win. A game that I should not have won. Well, apart from earlier on when there was knight e4 with some crazy in-depth lines which I missed. He resigns because he can't do anything. Rook g1 check is coming and then I'm going to promote by force. White's going to have to take and then I'm just up a rook. He can't stop me. If, if it's my move again, rook g1, king takes, queen here, king moves, queen takes h5. Game over. I, 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 I was still, like, my actual reaction after C4 when I was playing, again, audio didn't record, but I was like, what? Why? Because it makes no sense. White's up a horn, just take. Get rid of my only source of counterplay. But hey, you, the way that you win chess games, especially in worse positions, or even in better positions, is by asking your opponent questions, right? I say this all the time, but ask your opponent questions. If I do this, what are you going to do? What are you going to do about it? You're going to have to find the most accurate response, or you might lose, or I might get a drawing position. And yes, 99% of the time, your opponent might give you the correct answer and continue to have an advantage or continue to keep the game level. But your opponent only needs to make one mistake, answer one question incorrectly, for you to win the game. I hope you enjoyed episode 16 of The Rating Climb, even if it wasn't live like usual. If you enjoyed the video, then please consider dropping a like and subscribe to support the longevity of the channel. And I will see you in the next video.